Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Engineering SADX lecture video. I hope you guys are all doing well and are ready to learn, so let's get started. Now, when it comes to trusses, some other groundwork we have to talk about is the idea of truss stability, as well as the forces inside of a truss. All right, so it's actually not going to be too bad. We've discussed before that trusses carry either tension or compression. Now, what exactly does this mean? Well, it means that when we cut a truss member, we have to replace it with a single axial force. And this is nothing new. This is something that we did back in particle equilibrium. Remember, if we made a free body diagram and we cut through a rope or a cable, we had to replace that with an axial force. So it's going to be the same thing here. So let's say that we have our truss structure. And that for some reason, I'm very interested in this left hand side. Now, notice that the box that I create cuts through three of the members. So if I were to draw a free body diagram of this, I have to label all the forces on it. So we see that we have no external loads, which is not true in reality, but we, we can add them if we want to. But we know that we have a pin at the very left hand side, so we have two pin reactions. And since I cut through three of the members, I can actually replace these with three forces and not can replace them, but more or less I have to replace them with three forces. So in this case, I would have F1, F2, as well as F3. Now, if you guys remember from equilibrium, three equations, three unknowns, we can actually start to solve for these forces. And this is going to be something that we do uh, in the next video. So remember that we define the tension as positive and compression as negative. So remember before in particle equilibrium, I always said assume tension. This means that our force is pointing away from our joint. And if we do the math and we get our force as negative, well, it means that it's actually in compression. But if we do the math and we get our answer as positive, it means it's actually uh, in tension, which is good. So this is something, again, we're going to discuss more in the next video, the analysis of these forces. The only thing I want you guys to take away right now is that when we cut a truss member, we replace it with an axial load. And you guys are thinking, Clayton, piece of cake. I already know that. Well, let's move on to something a little bit different, which you guys may not know. And this is the idea of truss stability. So not only do we have to design for strength, but we also have to make sure that when we design our truss, it is stable. Now you guys are saying, Clayton, what exactly does that mean? Well, it means that if we design our truss, it doesn't just fall down. Remember that all the connections here are pins, so they're not going to resist any moment. And this will be one of the examples that I show you guys where it becomes obvious what I mean when it's unstable. Now you're saying, Clayton, this sounds complex. How do we make sure that our truss is actually stable? Well, it's simple. We actually have one nice equation. We have 2n minus m, and we have three cases. The first case is that it's greater than 3, second case it's equal to 3, and the third case where it's less than 3. Now you guys are saying, what is n, what is m? Well, it's simple. n is the number of joints we have, and m is the number of members that we have. And when we look at these three cases, it's going to mean three different things. If it's less than three, it means that our truss is stable, which is a good thing, but it's indeterminate. What does indeterminate mean? Well, it means that we can't calculate our truss forces using simple statics or equilibrium. We actually have to do some more advanced calculations. Think of it as more four unknowns, but only three equations, something like that. The second case where it's equal to three, this is stable as well as determinate. So this means that our truss is stable, which is good, and we can actually determine the forces using simple equilibrium. So this is going to be the case we're mostly focused on in this course. The third case when it's greater than three means that our truss is unstable. Now you guys are looking at this and saying, Clayton, I can do the math, but I'm still having a hard time picturing what exactly is going on. So let's do a quick little example. Let's say that we have this truss right here. And again, remember that all of the connections act as pins. So if I were to place a force, a lateral force at the top of this truss, we know that since there's no moment resistance, this truss is just going to go, right? It's just going to fall over. It's going to provide no resistance. So we know intuitively that this truss is actually unstable. So if I were to do the math and say, all right, I have my sexy equation 2n minus m. I look here and I say, okay, I have four joints, the four purple dots, and I have four members, the four red lines. So I go two times four minus four, I get four. And we know that this right here is greater than three. So it falls into that third case where our truss is unstable. So the math backs up what we can visually see. Now the question becomes, okay, well, how do I make it stable? 
Well, if we look at our equation 2n minus m and we want our number lower, well, we have to increase m. We have to increase the number of members. So if we look at our truss and now we add that additional member, we know that if I were to put that force p, it's not going to just simply fall over. It's going to provide resistance because we now have that diagonal strut. Well, does the math tell us that? Well, yes. If we look at 2n minus m, in this case, m went from 4 now to 5 because we added an additional member. From here, we get 3, which means that our truss is stable. And it is also determinant, meaning if I wanted to, I can solve this truss and all the forces using equilibrium. So you guys are saying, okay, okay, I know stable, I know unstable. What about determinant? I'm still a little bit confused with that indeterminate determinant thing. Well, let's see what happens. So an indeterminate truss, we would add in an add another member. So in this case, we would add another member like this. So we can see that it's definitely going to be stable. It has a lot of resistance because it now has a cross brace. And if we were to do the math, 2n minus m, well, we got 2 times 4, but this time minus 6. We have 6 members. So this is equal to 2, which is less than 3. So it's stable as well as indeterminate. So if we were to look here, we know it's stable, but we actually can't solve it using just our equilibrium equations. We have to get into a bit more advanced calculations that are actually involving the material properties of the truss itself. So it's something outside of this course. All you guys would need to know is that this is stable. Now you guys are saying, all right, Clayton, what about real life? Well, in real life, we like to have indeterminate things because indeterminate is basically backup to me. If I have one of my members that fail, well, take it away, we still have a stable truss. Now, if I had a stable but determinant member and one of the members failed, well, then I go into that unstable category. So I like to have indeterminate members because it provides us some sort of backup in case things go wrong. So that is the concept of stability. In this particular class, we are going to be focused on stable and determinant. Indeterminant wouldn't do anything because if I give you guys a truss you guys can't solve, well, <laughs> nobody gets anywhere really. So yep, that's it for this video. I want to thank you guys so much for listening. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video.